Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace. Welcome to Quad Programming in Main Assembly Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1, uh, link is in the description. Go check that out first before you watch this one. Let's get right into Part 2. So let's move on to Quad 6. So this is where I did a lot more stuff with the pitch and roll correction. So here I've got if W and S has been pressed at all, I want to take the absolute because W is going to give me a positive one and S is going to give me a negative one. I want to turn that into a, a one or it's going to be a zero if neither of these is pressed. So the sign is under absolute. The not is under logic here. So what this is saying is if the W and S is pressed, then that's going to be a one. And then this is going to have a zero output which means that the result of this is going to be zero. But if W and S is not pressed, then this is going to be a zero. This is going to wind up having a one output, and then it's going to multiply by this. So you get the forward coming into here. So what is forward? So the forward is coming from the speedometer. So this is giving me my forward speed. So I drag that out. So what all of this is saying then is if W and S is not being pressed, then take the forward speed, multiply it by this, and feed it into the pitch correction. Uh, because what I want to do is to reduce my forward speed when W and S is not being pressed so that I don't go forward if I don't want to go forward. However, I do need to be careful because if, if I just let the forward speed go straight to the pitch correction. If I'm going really fast and it tries to correct for that, I'm going to get um, a huge wobble. So let me show you if I skip this clamp. I'll tell you about the clamp in a minute. But if I move, do like this, so that I skip the clamp, and I try going forward, and then I stop, I get this. The clamp, do that, now if I go like this, now I've got the clamp back on. If I hit W and I stop pressing W, I get a gentle correction. So the clamp is basically saying, if you're going to make a correction, only make it within a certain range. So 0 0.02 uh, positive and negative going here. Another thing to notice is this debug out here. So this is a pitch correction. If we look on the screen, you'll see pitch correction uh, at the bottom left. And so I'm giving myself a little bit of data. Uh, and this is helping me with my programming so that if the bot is doing something weird, I can look at the data that's coming out of it and say, okay, hmm, that's not the data that I expected or, or why is it doing this? Let's, let's look at that data and try to figure out how we can correct it. So of course you can use the debug also for just uh, telling the user how much speed you have. That's the main use in a final product uh, is just giving somebody their speed. So the debug is under miscellaneous. You can drag that out. It starts off with a one multiplier and an integer. You can change this. I changed it to two decimals. You can give it a name. So we'll call it Bob again. And uh, the multiplier is if, let's say you, the data coming out of here is really tiny, um, and you might want to multiply this by 10 so that you get some useful data because two decimal points might not be enough uh, to give you any data. I did want to say something else I forgot to mention. It would be nice if there was a feature where you could drag and then hit Control C and then go over to here and do Control V to paste your uh, programming. It's kind of annoying having to redo all your programming. One thing you could do if you need to redo all your programming is take a screenshot and if you have a second screen you can use a second screen with the screenshot uh, to redo your programming over here. Uh, otherwise I suppose you could print your screenshot. The roll is pretty much the same thing. Uh, is A and D being pressed? Yes or no? Uh, what is my speed to the right from the speedometer? 
If I'm not trying to go right or left at the moment, let's take a multiple of my speed to the right. I will clamp it. This one I've got to 0.01 and we'll feed that into roll correction. I forgot to mention where W and S pressed is coming from. Let's go to the docking station. First, if we're looking at the docking station, I've added this output like so and then renamed it WS pressed. And then if I hit W or S, that's going to this output. And if I hit A and D, that's going here. I've got another one here. If up and down are pressed, uh, that's going to this output. I think that's everything I did with this iteration. So, and it works pretty well. Pretty satisfied with it. Oh, you can also notice that I've reduced the mass of my body a little bit. Now quad seven, so this one is just an experiment to see what would happen. Could I do spin without using servos? And you can see I can. Um, I haven't made an attempt to correct for the spin, uh, but I'm sure I could using a PID. But basically, Q and E, instead of turning the servos, is turning this extra motor on top, and I've got a couple of weights on the ends. Uh, so that's an alternative way to do your spinning if you don't want to have servos on the sides. So I want to show you uh, Quad 9 briefly because I thought this was going to be my final, but it turned out to not be my final. So in the programming, just very briefly, I was trying to correct for the height going up and down, by using the up speed uh, from the speedometer. That sort of worked, but not exactly. It would, uh, it just wouldn't maintain proper height. Uh, so I'm not gonna show you that programming. We're gonna move on to number 10, which was a much better copter. So here's number 10. I added this GPS and altitude sensor. Um, I've got the speedometer here. Here's my CPU for pitch and roll collection and then hidden under here is another CPU. So let's look at this product. So it's hovering very nicely. Let's go up a little bit. We can go down a little bit. It's maintaining its height. I'll go forward. Maintains its height. Go to the left. We'll go to the right and backwards. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? So let's see how I'm doing this. So I've done some reorganizing of my docking station. Here's the pitch and roll correction now. I've moved the uh, stuff about height off of here, but this is pretty much the same as it was before. Um, here's my final PID for my pitch. Here's my final PID for my roll. So let's move over to height correction. So height, the Z height is coming from the GPS and altitude sensor right here. We drag that out. So that gives us our constant height. I want to put the height into memory. The memory is in state right here. We drag that out. And memory says if input B is over 0.5, then input A will be stored in this node. So here's Input A is the height we want to store in, so I need a 1 to go into here. So how do I do that? Well, up and down, as long as up and down is being pressed, then a 1 is going into here. So it's constantly going to store the height. But as soon as I stop pressing up and down, then a 0 is going to come here and it's going to stop storing the height. But I also needed the height to be stored at spawn because otherwise it would start at zero. So the way I did that was this little bit here. With this thing, it's gonna feed a one into here right at the start, but then after that, there's gonna be a zero coming out of here. So there's a delay here and a not. So first you're gonna have a zero coming out of the delay when you start, which means that the not is gonna be one and the one and the one are going to go into the AND uh, gate, which is in logic, and then the one is going to go into the OR, and then it's going to go into memory, so it's going to store the height at spawn. But we don't want it to continually have a one coming in here, so that's why we've got the NOT and the delay. The one goes into the delay, which is just very brief. Uh, it goes to the NOT. Now the NOT is zero, so the AND is zero, and this is 
feeding a zero into here. So now we have our height and memory and we need to compare that to our present height constantly and see what the difference is. And if there's a difference, then we're going to multiply it by a, a constant to get a percentage of that and then feed that into the PID. So that's our height error going into the PID. So my PID here is 0 0.5, 0 0.07, 0 0.9. I want to say uh, there's a lot of fiddling uh, to figure this stuff out. Uh, lots of trial and error. I wanted to make sure the PID is only going to the height correction if up and down is not being pressed. So I've got that coming here to a not going into multiply. So if up and down is being pressed, this is a one, then this winds up being a zero, goes into the multiplication, and there's a zero going towards height correction. If up and down is not being pressed, then we get a one times the PID going into the height correction. I was having some trouble with the height correction from the PID being a little bit too aggressive, no matter how much I fiddled with this stuff. So I added a clamp here uh, to make sure that the height correction wasn't too dramatic. So you can see my height correction comes in here, gets added, and eventually makes its way to all of the motors. So that's it. It's a nice copter. The only thing I don't like is that if I'm going up and I stop pressing spacebar, it can be a little bit jumpy uh, getting to equilibrium. So I've done my best that I could do to try to keep it from uh, jumping around so much. Uh, but this is the best I can do. Uh, it does a lot better going down. If I stop hitting C, it equalizes pretty quickly. But I'm pretty satisfied with this. Oh yeah, you can even spawn it way up in the air. And it will recover itself, even if you haven't hit shift yet. Kind of crazy. Oh, uh, another thing in the programming I had um, something in the eye for pitch, uh, and what happened was uh, if I was going forward for a long period of time, it would remember that, and then it would be trying to correct for that, pitching forward, so then I wouldn't be able to pitch forward anymore, uh, couldn't go forward anymore. So I had to put this to zero. Occasionally it will not respond for some reason. Like right now I'm hitting S and it's not doing anything. So I usually just restart it if that happens. Now I'm hitting S and it works. So I don't know why it does that, some glitch, I guess. So I think that is everything that I wanted to talk to you about today. It is not perfect. It could definitely use some improvements. As I said before, if you see anything that I could do that would improve this, you're welcome to make comments. I hope you got plenty out of this. If you liked it, give it a like. Consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, ring the bell for notifications. Give me comments about what you think of the video. I like to read comments. Uh, what are improvements you think I could make? Besides my basic programming video, I've also got uh, some videos of best builds from the past. You can check those out. And if you happen to like scrap mechanic videos, I've got plenty of scrap mechanic videos on my channel. So check that out. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace. Let's fly it forward a little bit. I'm going to hit spacebar to go up. Wow, that was bad.